What's up class and welcome to the first video of my Fallout 76 building series. Now just like my Nomad Shop class for Fallout 4, I'm going to start off with the novice lessons first and work our way up to the advanced lessons. I'll be using the same green circle to black diamond rating system that I used for the Nomad Shop class. And it's funny because there's actually a bunch of ski resorts in Fallout 76 as well, so it just fits right in here. Now many of you that play Fallout 76 have already started building and have a basic grasp of the building system. So this video may be old hat, but you never know. There may be one or two golden nuggets in this video that you didn't know and that'll make it worth watching. But for the most part, this video is intended for the players just starting out the game or at any point in the future and want to get a basic tutorial. But before we get into all that, I have two announcements to make. First, I want to take a moment to thank my student council for sponsoring this video. As many of you already know, the student council is the nickname for my amazing Patreon supporters. I don't have the signs and lettering plans yet for Fallout 76, so I'll add that to the top of the wall in the future. But for now, I'll add it in digitally. Anyway, here are my amazing Patreons this month. Thank you guys so much. Your support is incredibly appreciated. And very soon, I'm going to start adding Patreon perks related to teaming up for building lessons in Fallout 76. Now that I bought a headset with a mic and I'm learning about server invites and all that. If you too want to help support the channel as well as get a bunch of cool perks, then head over to my Patreon page and look into joining the student council. Every dollar is reinvested in the channel to bring you better and better quality. Now the second announcement is for the winner of the Base Camp Acronym Contest. I posted a video a couple months ago where I asked you guys for suggestions on what the base part of Base Camp should stand for. Since since the camp part stands for construction and assembly mobile platform. I narrowed down the suggestions to the top five and then you guys voted for the winner in a follow-up video. And the winner is Blueprint Assisted Settlement Education by Hananoki Inc. So congratulations, you'll see your icon appear in the sidebar shout out Hall of Fame. They were all good suggestions though, so props to everyone who submitted a suggestion. All right, so let's get into it. What I'll do is run through these as quick tips, similar to the first video I posted in the Nomad Shop class, and then later posted some miscellaneous tip follow-up videos. But since I started that series almost two years after the game came out, I didn't need to go over some of the basics that I'll go over in this video. Okay, tip number one. As you know, you'll go into your pit boy and look for the button to press on your platform in the lower left bar. Once you press that, you'll have the option of setting down your camp where you want. And as long as it's not red, you'll be able to build in that location which is pretty much anywhere in the game not within a landmark zone. But here's the actual tip. The initial location of your camp device just sets the perimeter boundaries. You can then move the camp device itself out of the way later. So don't worry about getting the device on the level ground or in the perfect spot. What you'll want to look for instead is if the green perimeter covers all of the building areas that you want covered. They don't give you the biggest area to build in, so choose wisely. You know, maybe you want certain land features within the build radius or something. Now once you lock down the camp perimeter, you won't be able to move it again without paying more caps. However, once you do lock down the perimeter, the camp device itself can then be moved elsewhere. You can even put it inside your building after you've finished building it and such. Tip number two, once you build your camp or even just set it down, you can't pick it back up again, at least as far as I know. You move it to another part of the map by just setting down another camp device in that location. The original then disappears and now you have a new zone to build within at the cost of caps, of course. Now you can have a camp set down and also occupy public workshops, but I'll cover workshops in a different video. I just wanted you to know the difference between your own camp and a claimable workshop, which are scattered throughout the map. It would be kind of cool if you could just pack up your camp and go and you didn't have to leave it there, but there's no real harm in leaving it there, you know, it can't be destroyed, the device itself at least. Sometimes it's kind of nice, you know, to stumble on a camp someone else has left behind if you need to like scrap some materials or craft some ammo. If you're worried about your stuff getting damaged or destroyed, then you can just store all the items down to your camp device and leave it there, which by the way is a good segue into tip number three. Every object in your camp can be damaged or destroyed except for two categories floors and stairs. Now you guys can correct me if I'm wrong about this. I'm still learning the intricacies of the camp system myself as I make these videos. But as far as I can tell, anything categorized as a support structure seems to be invulnerable to damage. I guess they didn't want to build mechanics for collapsing structures and all that. But that's good news too, because floor tiles can be used to block bullets, 
and concrete blocks can be used to like block access to things. Both things I'll show you how you can use to your advantage in some upcoming videos. But things like walls and crafting benches and uh, dressers and all everything else, doors, all that stuff, that can all be damaged and come down. Turrets, of course, and all that stuff. But the interesting thing is, is that if something gets damaged and uh, it isn't fully destroyed, then you can actually store it and uh, later replace it and it'll sort of be healed. That's something I'll get to also in some later videos. Anyway, moving on. Tip number four. You can only build upper stories in your structural project by anchoring the supports with an item from the stairs menu. And that goes for the large stairs, the thin stairs, and even posts. They probably could have come up with a better name for that menu, actually, like vertical supports and then, you know, called the floor menu horizontal supports. But, you know, they probably wanted to keep it simple. That's the way to think of these two menus, though. Horizontal supports and vertical supports. They work together and you can't build upwards without a combination of the two. Hopefully future updates will add some more variety though, because the items they start you out with are kind of lame. But you know, that's the way the vanilla games start out in Fallout 4 as well. I can hardly use the basic assets in Fallout 4 anymore. I mostly build now with iron and concrete and asphalt, which all came from the DLCs. Tip number five. The next one should be pretty obvious, but I want to emphasize this for beginners. Always check your stored tab first when building because they changed it up from Fallout 4. If you go to the regular build menus, you'll be building a new item when you might already have built one for that item from an earlier build and it's just sitting in your stored menu. I wish they had just defaulted to an already built item, you know, with like a little number like they did in Fallout out for from your selection, but it doesn't do that. So be aware of that. Also, they have you go through two button clicks when storing an item and they're different buttons. So make sure you don't double click accidentally and scrap an item that you wanted to store. I had to get used to that at the very beginning of the game. Resources are pretty abundant, but you know, it's frustrating if you don't know about that. Tip number six, in order to craft almost anything in the build menu, you need to find plans. They give you almost next to nothing by default. In fact, you don't even get the tinkerer's workbench by default. You have to find plans for that, which is used to craft ammo and grenades and bulk items and such. To find the plans for the tinkerer's workbench, simply continue on the overseer's main story through the quest called Second Helpings. As a reward for that quest, you'll get plans to craft the tinkerer's workbench. See, like I mentioned in a previous video, I didn't do that. I just went off exploring out in the world and I was like, how do I craft freaking ammo? I'm running out of ammo here. And then, you know, then I learned. But anyway, also just make sure you actually read the plans as well as recipes and stuff from the note section of your inventory to be able to craft the item. I don't know why they didn't make it so you automatically learn the plans as soon as you pick them up. Kind of dumb, actually. I guess it's because you can get plans as quest rewards as well. They didn't want to, too many pop-up indicators on the screen at once or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, just make it a habit to uh, go into the note section, scroll all the way down, which also I wish they auto-populated the most recent items to the top, but they don't. More suggestions for the next suggestion box video. Anyway, once you craft the bench, you can hold on to it as a stored item once your camp moves from place to place, as mentioned in the previous tip. All right, tip number seven, you have a budget for building. This is basically the same as the settlement size in Fallout 4. The only difference is that there's no glitch to increase the size that we know of just yet. So you'll find your budget fills up pretty quickly. Now from what I've observed, items will take up less of your budget as you level up. So by the time that you get to like a hundredth level or so, you should be able to start creating mansions, you know? The only items that I don't think get any cheaper for your build budget are defenses, you know, specifically turrets. I know the basic turrets each take up about 10% of your build budget or so. I'm not sure if more advanced turrets take up a higher percentage or not because I haven't found plans for those yet, which leads into tip number eight. You'll need to find and read plans for basically each and every available item in the game. Sometimes they'll group these for you. You know, I was surprised at how many items unlocked with the advanced connectors plan that I bought from a vendor because most of the time you'll get plans like a single dresser or a single trash can. It's pretty funny. I guess that'll keep us builders exploring the wasteland for months to come. But it is cool when you find those plans or buy them from vendors. Vendors. You know, you got one more new exciting thing you can add to your base. Now you'll find most of the really cool plans from vendors actually. Some, however, can be unlocked during certain quests or events. For example, I was able to get the fusion generator by completing the repowering Poseidon power plant event. Doing that by myself was actually pretty challenging, so you might not want to tackle it, you know, for a few levels. But I also got all of the barn walls by simply claiming my first public workshop. That's not a bad deal because claiming a workshop usually costs between 20 and 40 caps. 
And that's much better than the prices at vendors. Those vendors, man, they're hardcore capitalists. <laughs> Unfortunately, the rest of the plans you get are random and sometimes you'll get repeats. So like I mentioned in my review video, it's basically gambling. You just never know what you're gonna get from any particular event or any particular location. You know, the rest of the plans are randomly found as loot. So it'll be difficult for me to give you guys tips about those, you know, or where to find them. I mean, I found some wicked plans just in straight up red toolboxes, you know, exploring around Appalachia. So you never know, but the most reliable way to get plans are to do events and claim workshops. You'll also get more plans for defending claimed workshops. But other than that, regular gameplay will give you the caps you need to buy more plans from vendors, as well as accumulate atoms to spend on camp items in the Atomic Shop. I've managed to pick up some pretty cool little items from the Atomic Shop and I haven't spent any extra money, which they probably don't want to hear, but you know. For most of us, it'll be a slow process, but in a few months, you'll start to see some amazing builds that I'll feature for you guys on the channel. All right, tip number nine. Once you've completed a build that you like, you can blueprint it. Now, as long as your build comes in under budget, I think the game actually automatically blueprints your last build. So you should see your last build show up if you re-enter the server, but you can also manually save your build by blueprinting it, you know, just to be safe. Now, for some reason, they created a separate budget for blueprints. They might have their reasons for this, but it's really limiting because it also ties up all the assets into that blueprint. So it's not technically a blueprint in the traditional sense of it being like a 2D drawing of your structure. It's actually the whole structure. So in that sense, a better name for it should have been like prefab or something. But they probably wanted to save that name for the DLCs where they might actually give you, you know, whole prefab options to place down in the form of blueprints. Anyway, as annoying as it is, I'm starting to see how blueprints can actually be used in creative ways. Like maybe you don't need to blueprint your whole base. You might be able to break it down into sections and then uh, reassemble your base into different configurations, you know, depending on the terrain. I'll have more videos on that as we get into uh, blue square and black diamond lessons. So stay tuned for that. And finally, tip number 10. The real joy of building this game, I think, is going to be the freedom to build wherever you want. I have a series of locations videos coming out that I'll show you where I found some crazy locations that you can actually build in and around, some that might surprise you. And I think that's going to be one of the major charms of building in this game, you know? The charm of building in Fallout 4 was that you were kind of building for your settlers, you know what I mean? You sort of felt like you were reclaiming the wasteland from nuclear demise. It's sort of hard to feel like Reclamation Day was a real thing in Fallout 76 because your settlements are all temporary and mobile, you know? So I don't know what exactly you're reclaiming, you know what I mean? But I do think the joy of building this game is going to center around locations, you know, and finding creative ways to integrate your camp into the existing landscape. So that and also showing off your creation to other players in the game. I was in the middle of a build, actually, when a random player hopped all the way up to my second store using the uh, marsupial mutation and gave me a thumbs up. You know, I was like, cool, man, I'm not even done yet. It's already looking pretty good. Oh, and that mutation is amazing for building, by the way. I actually lucked out myself and got it and then immediately started investing in the starch gene perk. So now it's kind of semi-permanent pretty cool though because I was getting chased by a death claw and I had uh, built my base too high for any monsters to jump so I just ran to my base leaped up onto the uh, first floor which was actually almost the height of the second floor and then my turrets just started going to work and then I laid down some sniper fire anyway enough of all that more to come that's going to do it for this video if you guys have any other tips or knowledge you want to share with the class feel free to leave a comment in the after school club down below more videos like this as well as some more fallout 4 building videos are on the way in the meantime guys thanks for watching happy building and class dismissed